Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Latvian Math Mathematical Olympiad 12th grade final round 2016. Problem number one. Let x, y and z be positive integers such that x cubed y to the fifth power z to the sixth power is a perfect seventh power of an integer. Show that x to the fifth times y to the sixth and times z cubed is also a perfect seventh power. Okay, so my hints for this problem. Uh, first of all, let's write x equals a times d, y equals b times d, and z equals c times d for some positive integers a, b, and c, and d, such that a, b, and c are co-prime. So they are gcd, gcd of a, b, and c equals 1. It's also, it's always possible to write that just by first computing GCD of three numbers x, y, and z, and by this d is in fact the GCD of x, y, and z. And then the crucial observation is that some number k is a perfect seventh power if and only if 7 divides the p-adic exponent of k for every prime number p. What is a p-adic exponent? If you don't know, it's just the highest exponent with, with which uh, p divides our number k. So it's the maximum, the highest number r, such that p to the power of r divides k. So for example, if you still don't get it, or if my teaching wasn't clear enough, for example, let's consider number 20 which is 2 squared times 5, well, the p, the, ex, the p adic exponent with p equals 2 of our number, it's 2, because the higher, the highest number, the highest power of number 2, which divides 20, is 2 to the second power. The p adic exponent with base 3 equals 0 because 3 doesn't divide this power and the p adic exponent with p equals 5 of 20 equals 1 and then we have only zeros. So give this problem a try and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so I hope that you've managed to solve it. As I suggested, I will write let x be equal a times d, y be equals b times d, z be equals c times d for some a, b, c, d, which are positive integers and gcd of a, b, and c equals 1. Okay. And now, let's consider the following. Let's write, let p be any prime number. For the sake of brevity, I will denote, so let's write, that alpha is the p-adic exponent of number a, beta is the p-adic exponent of number b, and finally gamma is the p-adic exponent of number c. Okay, and now let's the following. At least one of these numbers must be zero. Why is that? Well, because if every of the, if every uh, number a alpha beta and gamma would be greater than or equal one then that would mean that p divides a b and c at the same time but it's not possible because gcd of our numbers is one so at least one of alpha beta gamma must be zero Okay, so now we have three separate cases if you think about it. Case number one, alpha equals zero. If alpha equals zero, then let's look at the following. By assumption, 
by assumption 7 or 7 divides the periodic exponent of x cubed y to the fifth z to the sixth power but this number this periodic exponent it's just 3 alpha but alpha is 0 so you can omit it 5 times beta plus 6 times gamma we want to show that 7 does divide the periodic exponent of y to the fifth x to the fifth y to the sixth z cubed which is in turn equivalent to the fact that 7 divides 6 times beta plus 3 times gamma so we want to show that it is true but now let's notice the following 7 divides 5 times beta plus 6 times gamma it's equivalent to we can multiply the, the right hand side by 6 because 6 is co-prime with 7 and we see that it is equivalent to the following 7 divides 30 beta plus 36 gamma and let's also notice the following 7 divides 6 times beta plus 3 times gamma is equivalent to the fact that 7 divides 5 times this number and that is equivalent to the fact that 7 divides 30 times beta plus 15 gamma and let's finally notice that these two facts are equivalent because these numbers differ by 21 gamma and 21 gamma is divisible by 7 so this is true by assumption we have a bunch of equivalences so this is true as well okay so that closes our first case cases number two and three are very similar in case number two beta can be equal to zero this time by assumption by assumption 7 divides 3 times alpha plus 6 times gamma and we want to show that 7 does divide 5 alpha plus 3 times gamma and it can be proven quite easily in the similar way so since i have here 3 and here i have 5 i can multiply by 5 and let's notice that that equivalent to saying that 7 does divide 15 alpha plus 30 gamma and the fac second fact that 7 divides 5 alpha plus 3 times gamma after multiplication by 3 is equivalent it's equivalent to saying that 7 divides 15 alpha plus 9 times beta and again these two divisibilities are equivalent because these numbers differ by 21 gamma 21 gamma is divisible by 7 and let's finally consider case number 3 where gamma this time equals 0 now by assumption by our assumption 7 divides uh, 5 alpha plus 6 times beta and we want to show that 7 does divide 5 alpha plus 6 beta 
Oh, sorry. Uh, three alpha plus five beta. There was mistake because by our assumption we know that seven divides this, so we have three alpha plus five beta. I made a small mistake. And again, very similarly, seven divides our first number, if and only if it's it divides seven. 7 divides 5 times this number. And that is equivalent to saying that 7 divides 15 alpha plus 25 beta. And we wish to show that 7 divides 5 alpha plus 6 beta, which is equivalent to saying that it divides 3 times 5 alpha plus 6 times beta which is to say that 7 divides 15 alpha plus 18 beta. Okay, and now let's notice that these two conditions are equivalent because these two numbers differ by 7 times beta. 7 times beta is divisible by 7, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Okay. So that... We are almost there, so now we know, we know now, we know by now, that, that A, that A, look, A to the fifth times Y to the sixth times C to the third, is a perfect seventh power. It's a perfect seventh power, but now we want to deal with x to the fifth, y to the sixth, z to the third, and recall that x was just a times d, y was b times d, and z was c times d, and now we have what? a to the fifth, b to the sixth, c to the third, and d to the power 5 plus 6 plus 3, it's 14. This is, this is a perfect seventh power, and obviously d to the power of 14 is also a perfect seventh power, so this whole number is also a perfect seventh power which closes our proof. Okay, so I hope that you, that you have learned something new this time, that maybe you haven't heard about theadic exponents, and now you do. Uh, this type of problem, to be honest, I have seen it many times in many different mathematical competitions, so it's good to know how to deal with showing that some product is a perfect and power seventh power fifth power or something like that see you next time goodbye